Hi, and welcome to the Ivory Technical Bulletin. My name's Mark, and today we're going to cover some product updates from Gera along with some new products and tech tips. So let's get started. The Gera and X1 have both been updated with a whole host of new and improved functions. Some of them are uh, better switching supports, so you've got momentary contact or push and hold contact. Relative dimming support with the new brighter, darker function. Color control using the using RGB or RGBW, very simple way to control the color of a circuit. And a new tunable white function for controlling not just the brightness of a, a circuit or a fitting, but also the color temperature, which you can use to create human-centric lighting scenes. Works really well with the Gera Dali gateway that also supports tunable white using Dali Type 8, a new control type within Dali. There's also an AC control function for controlling an AC unit directly. Um, for example, using the uh, Antesis AC interface range. It enables you to uh, control things like the vane, the fan, see the error messages, uh, change the mode. mode. Uh, you're able to do that directly. You're not trying to do that from an RTC. So when you're using the internal regulation on the AC unit, uh, with these functions, you have a much uh, simpler, clearer way of controlling the unit. New sauna control function. Uh, it's very similar to a normal temperature control, but it has much higher temperature ranges and the um, terminology is designed to suit a sauna or a spa. The IP camera function has been improved with uh, password support now added if your cameras, uh, if the local IP cameras have passwords. And there's a new audio control function which gives you um, transport control, volume control uh, via the bus. So it's, it's only controlling things onto the KNX bus. Um, but it could be linked to the ISC Sonos gateway, for example, and enabling a really simple way of interfacing to the audio system that may be installed in the property. There are some specific updates relating to the G1. There's a new uh, application file for ETS. It does mean that if you're changing from an old uh, existing G1 and updating it to a new one, you will need to rebuild um, rebuild the, the screen and the layout and the group addresses within ETS. You aren't able to upgrade the application. The benefits of the new one, um, as well as adding all the new features and, and some of the functions looked at on the previous slide, it also supports ETS channels, which is a much easier way of programming within ETS, automatically grouping together some of the objects of a, of a function. You're able to turn off unused ele elements, so if you're not using door comms, for example, you're able to turn off that function, uh, you turn off that display within the G1. There's now a pin on the start system menu, so you can prevent unwanted access to the settings. And you can trigger a restart from the bus. There's an object within ETS that you can use to restart the G1. We finally have the internal intercom feature. It works when you're using a Gera door communication system or DCS system. You need to have the DCS IP gateway. But with this, you're able to call between two G1s in a property uh, internally in the system. There's also a new floor call, floor call function, which allows you to, uh, might be when you walk, you might have a, a, a a door unit externally, when you push the doorbell, you allow someone into the property, but when they reach the apartment door, you want to have a doorbell, the G1 can be used to play that sound from the doorbell. It's triggered with an, an object again with an ETS. The latest versions shipping, they'll be on index 09 or greater, are secure ready. So they're already, uh, they have a, the pre-shared key, which you can use when using IP secure, which we're going to see a lot, a lot, hear a lot more about and see a lot more of it light and build uh, this year. Overall, the, uh, there's, uh, you can have more function folders and more channels within each and, and more icons. So there's six function folders uh, and each can have 25 channels and there's 322 new icons within the G1. The heating function can now use the internal temperature model. Again, only on the latest shipping devices, Index 09, there is now a little module which you can slip into the bottom of the unit so you don't need to use an external keypad or a, um, another device on the KNX bus to provide the temperature to the unit. It can all be done uh, internally with, with one G1. And because the thermostat control has been updated to being a function, instead of only being able to have one thermostat control per G1, you're now it's now unlimited, um, well, based on the number of pages, but you can control multiple zones of heating from the same G1. The updates on the X1 are similar, but there's some extra functions. There's now support for the uh, connecting via the IEC Smart Connect or the new Gear S1. They are actually the same device, but it enables you to have remote access without starting any VPN or logging and opening any ports on the router. It's a much simpler, safer and more secure way of providing remote access into a system. 
There's a demo mode within the app, so you don't need to be connected to an X1 system to be able to show maybe a potential customer how that works. You can just go into the settings of the X1 app and enable the demo mode. Same as the G1, there's now a, a pin protection for the start menu or the setup menu to stop um, you know, uh, changes being made inadvertently. The diagnostics page requires a password as well. That's uh, from the on the installer side of the system. And it, within the trades function, which is, there's two views within the X1 app, there's the normal kind of building room view, but there's also a trades function. The room name has now been added to the um, function. So previously it just you just had a, a lot of circuits called light, for example, but now it would tell you the kitchen light, the um, you know bathroom light, etc. It does prepend, prepend that room name to the function, which makes it a lot more useful. The uh, ca camera functions now supports passwords, and you can use timers on all functions, which is a really big uh, step forward. Previously, it was only on some of the functions, but now the customer can set up a timer on all different functions uh, that are available. The thermostat function is uh, it's still absolute mode change only. There isn't support of relative mode change yet. We're hoping to see that on a future update. Um, certainly something to consider if you're going to be using the uh, X1 with thermostats from other manufacturers because a lot of them don't support absolute mode change. A new-ish product from Gear is the KNX Control 9 V2. Um, I say new because the product has had a complete overhaul. There's a lot of changes to the way the, the unit works, uh, the internal workings of the unit the screen. Everything has had a pretty big overhaul. Now the Control 9 is designed to work with the Gera Home Server. It's a display device for the Gera Home Server. It doesn't work independently. The Control 9 KNX model is no longer available. Um, the big change really is capacitive touch on the screen, uh, much higher resolution as well. Uh, it works with the existing back boxes, so you are able to just swap it out with control nines that are already installed. It has a 230 volt input. Previously there was an external power supply, but now it's, it's embedded in the unit, which is much more reliable. Uh, it's got a faster processor, a bigger memory, there's a better microphone and a better speaker. And they've removed the camera, which wasn't used anyway. It has some functions to make it uh, easier to support for the installer. It's got TeamViewer already installed on the unit, so you can remote into it and configure it from your own laptop. And a recovery stick is shipped with the unit. You're able to use that to reflash the Control 9 if it has issues. Uh, you can also download an image of the recovery stick to create your own one if needed. It only works with um, Quad Client 4.5 or higher, so make sure your home server is on the latest version when you do use it. And if you are previously had a free visu, if you've created a visualization within home server and you've got an existing Control 9, because the screen resolution has changed, you will need to create a new uh, design. You will need to add the icons for all of your visualization um, throughout for every single page. So quite a lot of work if you are using free visu and you want to update, uh, you want to add a new Control 9 to the installation. Over the last few months, Gear have updated their range of KNX power supplies. These replaced the existing models. There's now four models. There's the 160 milliamp, the 320 milliamp, and the 640 milliamp, which are all four modules wide, which is smaller than the previous units. And there's a new 1280 milliamp model, the 213800, which is six modules wide. The one of the big Changes or advancements is you can now have two power supplies on the same KNX line. You don't need to have the 200 meter spacing that was previously required. The two power supplies can sit right next to each other, but not on the 1280 milliamp model. You can't. You can only do that with the normal 160, 320, and 640 milliamp modules. The 1280 milliamp model is um, it's quite a big step up. Obviously, it's quite a lot bigger than other KNX power supplies. You could use it to um, for devices that are drawing more current. Obviously, we, we normally estimate 10 milliamps per device, 64 devices, 640 milliamp power supply. But a lot of new devices are, are higher, some of them up towards 20, 25 milliamps per device. And this large power supply from Gear will allow you to um, you know can, to power them without any adverse effects on the bus. You could also use it for so the second output becomes more usable. You, the auxiliary output available on on pretty much all Canix power supply supplies is draw is coming from the same transformer. So you've only got the rating across the whole device. With a twelve eighty milliamp power supply, you could be using six forty milliamp on the Canix line in the normal way, but then you've still got six hundred forty milliamps available on the auxiliary output, which you could be using for you know devices that do require an auxiliary voltage often touch screens or capacitive touch keypads need it device like ip routers also use it
A big change from the previous range, the 640 milliamp only has one choked output. It used to have two choked outputs for two KNX lines and the auxiliary uh, voltage without the choke, but this new version only has one choked output and the auxiliary voltage. On all units there's a potential free uh, relay output which is used for fault indication. It'll be uh, open when the device either has uh, over voltage, under voltage or isn't powered. It'll be closed when the device is operating normally. If you connect that to maybe a higher level line using a binary input or maybe to, a, to some other system that you can use for notification, you'll have a, a really simple way of knowing that the line that the device is powering is working correctly. When this is paired with the ability to have two power supplies next to each other, you can not only give a uh, really simple redundancy, build redundancy in the system by having two power supplies next to each other, you can also find out the status immediately if one fails, which enables you to do reactive maintenance, maintenance maybe send a new power supply to site for the electrician to install. Perfect for those installations that require 100% uptime. Quick technical tip, when using the Gera home server with a USB connection to a KNX installation, the it is only designed to work with Gera USBs, uh, either the 17000 or the 10800. The 1080 is the more common version that's used, that's the DIN rail module. Um, when it was developed, it was developed specifically with those gateways. They've never tested or approved it with any other uh, KNX USB gateways. The, um, the way that that would manifest itself, you may get an initial connection to the bus, you may have one-way connection to the bus, so some telegrams are received or sent, but others aren't. So the first step if you're having any kind of communication issues between a home server and a KNX installation is to check that you're using a Gera USB gateway. We recommend using a USB gateway because it ensures that the any networking issues wouldn't affect the connection between the home server and the installation. You may not be able to use your app to control the home server, but any logic, any recording, graphs, anything like that would continue to work if the IP network failed or went down for some reason if there's a USB connection between the units. It's far more reliable, uh, works in a much better way. That's it for this Ivory Egg technical bulletin. If you have any questions, please post in the comments below or get in touch via the website. Thanks for watching.